Once there was a man named Jacob who lived in the land of Canaan with his 12 sons. The oldest was Reuben, then Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Gad, Asher, Dan, and Naphtali. And finally, Benjamin and Joseph. They were Jacob's children by his second wife, Rachel. Being the youngest, they stayed at home while their brothers worked the pastures. Jacob loved all his sons, but Joseph was his favorite. Father, when can I tend the sheep with my brothers? I dreamed it would be any day now. Joseph, you and your dreams. <laughs> you start tomorrow. And to celebrate the big event, I have a surprise for you. Now that he's of age, Joseph will join his older brothers in the fields. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> and this will keep you warm. Oh, Father, it's beautiful. Hey, look at these sleeves and the colors. Father should have given you a coat like that, Reuben. You're the oldest. Huh in my dreams. Joseph's brothers were jealous of his gift. It reminded them that their father loved him most of all. But the beautiful coat wasn't the only thing that made them angry at Joseph. Judah, Asher, Simeon. The other night I had a wonderful dream. We were all in a field binding bundles of grain. And my bundle stood upright while yours gathered around mine and bowed down. Bowed down? To you? Huh? Father may worship you, but we don't. Hey, it was just a dream, Simeon. I'm going to bed. You know, last night I dreamed I was a star in the sky, along with 11 other stars. The sun and the moon were there too. And <laughs> they all bowed down to me. Eleven stars? You mean eleven brothers. And we're supposed to bow to you? Who do you think you are? A king? Ugh. If we're the stars, who are the moon and sun? His mother and I. Joseph, you don't think your family should actually worship you? Father, it was just a... Get to sleep. You and your brothers leave early in the morning. If you sleep late, they won't wait for you. Father's got that right. <laughs> and I don't want to hear anything more about dreams. <sighs> the next day, Joseph was left behind. Hello? Uh-oh, the dreamers found us. Get ready to bow, my brothers. Look at him, strut around like a peacock in his new coat. Sometimes I wish we could get rid of him. No, you don't. But I do. If he mentions one more dream, Simeon, he's our brother. We couldn't hurt him. But you've given me an idea. <sighs> what were you trying to do? Lose me? Joseph began to tell his brothers how smart he had been to find them, but they weren't listening. They had other plans. Hey, careful with the coat! Reuben, Judah, no! Ah! We'll keep him down there until we figure out what to do next. 
Reuben planned to free Joseph when no one was looking and sent him scurrying home. Oh, no! Reuben and Naphtali rounded up the flock while the others ate their supper. While they ate, a caravan approached. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if we sold Joseph to those merchants? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? We'd finally be rid of the pest and have money from the sale. Everyone agreed to the terrible plan. And Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver. Brothers, why are you doing this? God, whatever happens to me, I still have my faith in you. You did what to Joseph? Calm down, Reuben. I'll calm down when you figure out what we're going to tell Father. We have figured it out. We ripped Joseph's coat. We'll just make up some story. We looked everywhere for him, but only found his coat. Oh, Joseph. What has happened to you? My son. The brothers lied, and Jacob believed them. Joseph was taken to Egypt and accused of a crime. He hadn't done anything wrong, but he was thrown into the Pharaoh's prison anyway. Even in prison, Joseph trusted in God. God, I didn't do anything bad, but I'm in here for some reason. I know in my heart that it's all part of your plan. Joseph was right, and part of God's plan was to bless him with a special gift, the ability to understand other people's dreams. Oh, what a terrible night. If I only knew what my dream meant. Ah, my dream was four times as confusing as yours. I can tell you what it means. You understand my dreams? Ha! Not I. Only God can explain them. I believe you. Tell me about my dream. I was Pharaoh's cupbearer until I displeased him. In my dream, I saw a grapevine. On the vine were three branches with grapes. I squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup and put the cup in Pharaoh's hand. The three vines mean that in three days, Pharaoh will set you free, and you'll be his cupbearer again. Thank you, Joseph. No, thank God, my friend. And when you're free, 
please tell Pharaoh about me. Tell him I shouldn't be in this awful place. I promise, I promise. Oh, enough about you. I'm next. In my dream, I had three baskets on my head. In the top basket were baked goods for Pharaoh. Suddenly, three birds came and ate everything out of the basket. What's that all about? In three days, you will also leave this prison. I knew it! I'm too important to stay here any longer. Wait, there's more! Everything you own will be taken away, and you will be given Pharaoh's harshest punishment. I'm sorry. Everything Joseph said came true, but the cupbearer forgot to tell Pharaoh about him. Joseph stayed in prison for two long years. Then one day, Oh, what a strange dream! Pharaoh met with the wisest men in his kingdom. Maybe they could understand his dream. But not one of them had an answer. Then the cupbearer remembered his promise to Joseph. Oh, Pharaoh! There is a very wise man in your prison who might explain your dream. Joseph, I dreamed that I was standing on the banks of the Nile when seven fat cows came out of the water. Then seven skinny cows came out of the river And suddenly, the skinny cows ate the fat cows. <laughs> what does it mean? My God is telling you what he plans to do. The seven fat cows mean that there will be seven years with plenty of crops and food for everyone. But the seven skinny cows mean that after that, for seven years, no crops will grow and your people will have no food. Oh, this is horrible! Terrible! No, Pharaoh. God has sent you this message so that you can prepare. Build barns to save some of the food that grows in the seven years of plenty. Your people will have plenty to eat. It is true. You are filled with the Spirit of God. This is the wisest man in my kingdom. We'll build these barns and save our food. And there is only one man who I trust to do such an important job. This man, Joseph. Joseph went right to work. And soon the barns were bursting with grain and filled with cattle. But Joseph's greatest achievement was that the people loved him. God had helped Joseph do these wonderful things and Joseph never forgot to thank him. Seven years later, the terrible drought that Joseph had warned about arrived. No crops grew anywhere, not even in Joseph's old home, Canaan. We're out of food, Father. There's a wise leader in Egypt who has stored food for seven years. He's selling it to anyone who needs it. Then we'll go meet with him and buy his grain. Not Benjamin. I want him safe here with me.
Joseph recognized his brothers. Bless you, great one. But they didn't recognize him, so he pretended to be a stranger. Where are you from? Canaan, great one, seeking food for our family. You're spies! No, we're brothers from a family of twelve. Please believe me. Liar! There are only ten of you. One brother was killed, and Benjamin, the youngest, was left at home. Hmm. I'll sell you my grain, but to prove that you are innocent and honest, bring this younger brother of yours the next time you come. I am going to keep one of you here until you return. <gasps> Do you promise? We promise. God is punishing us for selling Joseph into slavery. He pleaded with us, and we betrayed him. <clears throat> I have no more time for you. Take your grain and go. And remember your promise. Father, we had no choice. Oh, Simeon, my son, a prisoner in Egypt. But look, Father, we got the grain. Hey, my money's here in the sack. Now we'll be accused of being thieves as well as spies. Jacob didn't want to lose another son to Egypt. So the family tried to save their food. But soon, it was all gone. We're leaving for Egypt. And we must take Benjamin. No. He'll wind up in prison like Simeon. We promised, Father. If Benjamin doesn't come, Simeon will stay in prison. And the Egyptian ruler won't sell us his grain. Benjamin will come home unharmed. I promise. If he doesn't, Judah, I'll die of sadness. Is your father well? Yes, sir. Good. God has blessed you. And you kept your promise, so I'll keep mine. <laughs> then the brothers left, but Joseph had told his servant to secretly place his silver cup in one of their sacks. Why do you repay good with evil? One of you has stolen my silver cup. Oh, I don't understand. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Thief! For this crime, you will remain here in Egypt as my slave. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. It's no. It's no. Please, if Benjamin doesn't return home with us, our father will die of grief. He stays. No! No! Take me instead! No, me! Please, Great One. When you threw me down that well, you meant it to be a bad thing. But in the end, God has turned it into something good. I came to Egypt, 
and helped keep a nation from starving. It's me, Benjamin! Joseph! It's true I'm Joseph Oh, can't you tell it's me? Look closer and you'll see The eyes of your lost brother I am so glad to have my family gathered here It's so good to know you're near Gather your families and our father and come live with me in Egypt. Joseph, God be praised. You're alive and well. Joseph and his family were never apart again. And God, who helped them survive the famine, raised up a great nation from this family. So Joseph learned that even when bad things happen, God can turn them into something good. It was a very sad day when the king of Babylon surrounded Jerusalem with his army. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. Attack! The king and his army stole things that belonged to God. Then they destroyed his temple. The king then ordered that the stolen things be taken back to Babylon. But that was not all he stole. Ashpenaz, take the brightest young men in Jerusalem. They must be very healthy and very smart, so they can work for me in my palace. Don't touch those. They are from the temple. They belong to God. Take everything back to our kingdom. So the holy cups and plates belonging to God and Jerusalem's finest young men were carried hundreds of miles away to Babylon. Among those taken were Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And even though Daniel and his three friends were hundreds of miles away from their home and the house of God, they stayed loyal to God.
Are you studying hard? This is impossible. We'll never learn to read and write your language. God was with Daniel and his friends. Your language is very interesting, Your Majesty. Teach us more. God gave them more wisdom than the other young students, and they loved him for it. In time, the king saw how the boys were ten times smarter than all the wizards, magicians, and wise men in Babylon. And God gave Daniel something special, the ability to know and understand dreams. It was a good thing, too. King Nebuchadnezzar began having a strange dream. Arioch! A dream that kept him up night after night. Bring me my best magician, wizard and wise man. They must tell me what this dream means. Well, what are you waiting for? On my way, O oh king. Sleep, sleep. I've got to get my sleep. O oh, king, live forever. What do you want to know? Ask any question. We have all the answers. Thank the gods. I have a most important question for you. Magician, wizard, and wise man. No, he's the wizard. He's the wise man. He's the magician, O oh, king. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Do you want to know what is colder? Snow? Or a dog's nose? Or how to turn goat's milk into cloth? Or the number of giants living inside the earth? No, no, no! I have been having a very strange dream night after night. That's simple. Piece of cake. No problem. So tell me what it means. Okay, but tell us what your dream was. Then we'll tell you what it means. Oh, no. If you are so smart, first tell me what I dreamed, then tell me what it means. You want us to tell you what you already know? Then tell you what you don't know? But you'll know if we know what you already know? Yes, yes, yes. I knew you were smart. Are you kidding? No way! Forget it! Tell me what I dreamed right now, or, or I'll punish all of you. But no one on Earth can do such a thing. Only the gods can tell you that. And they don't live on Earth. That's it. Now I'm mad. I'll not only punish the three of you, but... But... Ariok! Get rid of all the wizards, magicians, and wise men in Babylon! Well, what are you waiting for? On my way, O oh king. Arioch went to Daniel's house. He told him about the king's order to punish every wise man in Babylon. Wait, Arioch. Please, don't harm anyone tonight. Daniel, you're my friend. I'll wait, but only until tomorrow morning. Let's pray, my friends. God must help us understand the king's secret dream. No one should be harmed over this. Wake up, Daniel. I've come to explain the king's secret dream to you. Thank you, God. Oh, king, there's someone here to tell you what your dream means. Impossible. Who could be smarter than my wizard, magician, and wise man? One of the captives from Judah. You can tell me about my dream? No, not I. Is this some joke, Arioch? But God in heaven can explain all secret things. Oh, I know what your dream means. I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word. About what I've seen and what I've heard It's a simple message, sir With a truly holy theme Oh, I know what your dream means Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar
Nebuchadnezzar, believe me, it's my pleasure to come here to you and shed some light. I've been praying to God and this may sound awfully odd, but I understand the dream you had last night. Saw a statue with a head of gold, he was bronze and iron with big clay toes, symbolized the kingdoms of this earth. The golden face that I saw shining means down here you're the number one king. I'm giving you the facts for all they're worth. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I heard. It's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy theme. Oh, I know what your dream means. Now the rock that rolled on down and brought the statue to the ground Shows that earthly kingdoms soon will pass Yeah, the interpretation is that out of all the nations God's is the kingdom that will last Oh, I know what your dream means Oh, I know what your dream means God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I've heard. It's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy theme. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I've heard. It's a simple message, sir. With a truly holy thing Oh, I know what your dream means God has told me, King, what your dream means Exactly right! You are smarter than all of my wizards, magicians, and wise men put together Not me, sire God told me this secret, not because I'm greater than anyone else, but so you can know what it means. But what does it mean? You're king for now, but neither you nor your kingdom will last forever. But God's kingdom will last forever. Your God is the God of gods, the king of all kings. Your God tells people things they can't possibly know. You deserve a reward. From this moment on, you will rule over Babylon for me and be in charge of all my wise men. O oh, king, I beg you, do not punish them. Of course, anything you ask. Uh, what was your name again? Daniel, if I am to rule, I need help. I have three wise friends. Make Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego leaders of Babylon as well. It shall be done, Daniel. Many years passed, and after King Nebuchadnezzar left the throne, his son Belshazzar became king. Daniel stayed in Babylon, and every day, three times a day, he faced Jerusalem and prayed to God. After so many years, Daniel was completely forgotten by the new king, Belshazzar. One night, King Belshazzar had a big party. The foolish king used cups and plates stolen from the house of God. <laughs> Is everyone having fun? By drinking from the stolen cups, he dishonored God. He only believed in false gods made from gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. <laughs> well, let us thank the gods for this wonderful party! <laughs> what is that?
<laughs> Wizards, magicians, wise men, come here, quickly! What does it say? Read it to me. Many meanie tickle person. Many meanie tickle person. Tell you what, anyone who can read those words uh, gets a gold chain. Eeny meeny tackle parsnip. Eeny meeny tackle parsnip. Eeny meeny tackle parsnip. How about this? A fine purple robe fit for a king. I'll even make you third highest ruler in my kingdom. Impossible. Infeasible. Inconceivable. Is there no one in my kingdom who can read these strange words? I know of someone, my son. Tell me, mother, who, who is it? In the days of your father, this man had wisdom like the gods. Call for Daniel. Are you Daniel? The one who believes in the god who created heaven and earth? Look, the gold chain, the purple robe, and third highest ruler in the kingdom. Everything is yours if you can read these words. King Belshazzar, keep your gifts or give them to someone else. Oh, then you can't read it either. But I can, and I will tell you what it says. Your father was so proud and stubborn he lost his kingdom. God rules over everything on earth, and He decides who will be king. You know all this, but you aren't sorry for the terrible things you've done. Tonight, you used cups and plates stolen from His temple. You have dishonored God. God himself sent the hand that wrote these words. Mene, God has counted the days until your kingdom will end. Tikal, you are not good enough to be king any longer. Ufarsin, your kingdom will be given to some other people. Daniel, I know you speak the truth. King Belshazzar kept his promise and gave Daniel the purple robes and golden chain and made him the third highest ruler in the land. What Daniel said did come true that very night. Another ruler, King Darius, took over the kingdom. The new king picked three men to rule the kingdom. And since God had made Daniel very wise, Daniel was one of the three. Soon, King Darius saw how Daniel was better than the other two men, and he planned to make Daniel the one and only ruler of the land. That made the other two men very angry. The two mean wise men wanted to make Daniel look bad. But he always told the truth and was not lazy nor dishonest. <sighs> we must make Daniel look bad. But how? He is just too good. I have an idea. Daniel really, really believes in his God. We will <laughs> use that against him. <laughs> Thank you.
It's me, God. Daniel. I was right. Daniel faces Jerusalem and prays to his God three times a day. This plan will work. I can't wait to tell the king. Hey, it's my plan. I'll tell the king. Not if I get to him first. Why, you... Theirs was a terrible plan, a plan to get rid of Daniel. Oh, King Darius, you have many enemies. And we know how to find them. For 30 days, let's have a holiday throughout the kingdom. For 30 days, no one can pray to any god or any human except to you. Hmm, I kind of like the sound of that. But here's the best part. If they don't pray to you, they must be your enemy. So we throw them into... The, the lion's den. den! By the gods. Uh, I mean by me. I like it. A holiday for 30 days. Yes, a great holiday. A feast like no other. I must tell Daniel. It's a wonderful new law. Daniel heard about the new law, but he was still loyal to God. He's breaking the king's new law. My plan worked. Daniel is praying to his God. Let's throw him into the lion's den. Wait, it wasn't your plan. It was my plan. Was not. I'm much wiser than you. Oh, King Darius, we found someone who doesn't obey your new law. Unbelievable! Who is this terrible person? He is the Israelite, Daniel. No, not him. He prays three times a day to his God, just as he did before you made the law. <laughs> Shall it be two lions or three? I can't hurt Daniel. He's a trusted advisor, and more importantly, my friend. But King Darius, as you know... The law says no law given by the king can be changed. That's right. That's right. All right. <sighs> Take Daniel to the lion's den. My dear friend, what have I done? I'm sorry, Daniel. I don't want to do this. You have always been loyal to your God. Maybe he will save you from the lions. Don't worry. I won't be alone down there. So that no one would move the stone and let Daniel out of the den, King Darius sealed the opening with his royal seal. King Darius could not sleep that night. He was very worried about his friend. The next morning, King Darius ran to the lion's den. Oh, Daniel, has your God kept you safe? Open the lion's den! But there was nothing to fear. <laughs> You're up early, King Darius. Daniel was safe and sound. I can't believe my eyes. You're okay. When the lions attacked, God saved me. He sent an angel to close their mouths. The lions didn't hurt me because God knew I hadn't done anything wrong. And I haven't done anything wrong to you, O King. Daniel, 
I'm so happy. And you call yourselves wise men? Take them away. That was a terrible plan. Don't look at me, it was your big idea. Was not, was too. King Darius wrote a letter to everyone in the world. Peace and happiness to all. From now on, all of you will respect the God of Daniel. He is greater than any other God because he uses miracles to rescue and save people. Daniel continued working for King Darius and always stayed loyal to God. And God blessed him for the rest of his life.